All right, Rusty. So we were talking about Fit Radio. I've been a fan of Fit Radio for a really, really long time. And, you know, we shot a commercial with you guys, I mean, almost 10 years ago or whatever it was. And we've been using Fit Radio in our gyms for a really long time because it allows us to have pre-made mixes and all these different types of stuff that we love. But over the years, then we've also been hit up by ASCAP and these different companies that make you really nervous about playing music that isn't, um, that you don't have the rights to. And so I want to talk right. today about a problem that a lot of gym owners have. And I think that this is a great, great conversation with you, who you probably know better than most. What is going on where the gym owners are getting these aggressive calls from these music labels or these different companies? And then what solutions are available on the marketplace? And then obviously, I want to talk about your solution. Um Sure. But let's dive in, man. Thanks for being on the show. Really appreciate it. Yeah, man. No, thanks for having me. I mean, it's certainly, it's really frustrating. You know, we talk to gyms every day that reach out to us that have been contacted by ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, and GMR. Um, and they don't necessarily understand why that they're paying, um, you know, why they need to pay the, these rights agencies. And I'll call them PROs and I'll reference some of that. But when I say PRO, um, I'm referring to a performance right organization. Right. So, you know, the easiest way to, I guess, get started to just explain it is obviously on the performance side and on the publishing side, artists and song, songwriters will sign deals with these entities to collect royalties on their behalf. Right. So Fit Radio has to pay these royalties, right, as part of our consumer streaming service. But gyms and other businesses like bars and nightclubs and lounges who use music as a part of their business also are responsible to pay these royalties. And the easiest way, like when somebody asks me, you know, why do I have to pay this? I'm like, would your business be fundamentally the same if you turned off all your music? Or if you started playing like, you know, royalty free music, would your business be fundamentally the same? And I think, you know, 99% of the time, the answer is no, right? Like if you go into, you know, whether it's an Orange Theory class or like a Berries, like they're using music, music is integral to that piece. And if you were an artist, right, and like, let's say you worked your entire life to learn how to create this music, and you created this incredible workout track that people were using in every gym around the country, like, it's not, it's not fair to make double O, two, three, or whatever per play that they're making to listen to that on an individual use when that track is being used in a business setting. So I think the hard part is I, the first piece of this is for gyms to understand why that they're paying that. The other piece is there's a ton of services out there that are business services, right? That cover a background rate, right? And they say that they cover the background rate for gyms. But the complicated piece is if you're playing like elevator music in the background of the gym, and like, let's say you've got a big box gym that's like playing music, but you can barely hear it. That's a true background rate. But there's a lot of like, cross training gyms and like all of these smaller studios that are paying these background services, but it doesn't cover you if you have a fitness class. So if you offer fitness classes or training where music's involved, you actually pay this higher rate. But what happens is if you're paying the, if you're paying the fitness class rate, you don't have to pay the background rate. So what we see is you'll have a, uh, let's say like, most recently, we talked to a gym, I don't want to mention who they are, but they were using a service Rockbot, right? And Rockbot does cover all of your background rates, right? But they do not cover the fitness class rates that you're responsible for. So this gym was paying BMI, CSAC, and ASCAP, but they were also paying Rockbot. And what I was trying to explain to them is you're technically paying Rockbot this fee right? That has this built-in background service fee, but you're also paying a license fee to the, to the PROs. And you technically, sh that background fee is included in this higher rate that you're paying. So it's been challenging for us. And I've act we've actually had a lot of conversations with the PROs themselves about policing the industry and making sure that some of these background services are properly relaying the sets of rights that they can offer. Um, so not to get like too off tangent off the rip, but like the gist of it is like, if you have fitness classes that are set to music, right? And like, even if you're just like a cross training gym and you're putting on music and you're blasting, you're turning up and people are doing a specific workout, like 
that workout would not fundamentally be the same without music. And the labels feel like, and the PROs feel like that they're owed a higher rate for that type of use, right? Um, it's kind of similar to the rate that they charge nightclubs and bars. Like my background is actually in entertainment and I've been involved in nightclubs and bars in the past. Um, and the rates that we were paying were, you know, probably more comparable to that than what you see in the you know, fitness industry. Um, so, so just to kind of summarize what you're saying is that let's just take like um, a department store, right? If I walk into like a Macy's or whatever, and there's kind of like background music, that's totally different than if it's enhancing the experience and it's a piece of the business, essentially, right? And, Nailed it, yeah. And so if we're, if, if a big part of our business is the music, because the thing about our, our gyms is, even though it's not necessarily like a spin class, it's so predicated on the music, it is definitely still an integral part of our class. Like if you came in and you didn't have any music playing, that'd be kind of weird, right? Whereas if you went to right. an apartment store, sometimes there is no music and it's not that big of a deal. And so when these gym owners get these aggressive calls, I know for me, sometimes I used to tell them, hey, we listen to public radio. I don't know, does, does telling them you listen to public radio solve the problem or no? Doesn't matter, right? So they, they're not concerned about what service that you use um, because if you offer a fitness class prior to the relationship that we have as fit radio with these companies, when what took so long to do this deal was there wasn't a way to get the entire set of rights bundled together, which is why we started offering that. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's the tricky part. The only, it doesn't matter whether you're playing radio, whether you're playing Spotify or just the commercial or the consumer version of fit radio, right? If that music is on, it's adding value to your business. The only way you wouldn't have to pay them is if, you know, that music was off. The second piece, and this is actually probably really where it is, where I see the most, I guess, uncompliance or non-compliance, right? Is we find that almost all gyms are paying one of the PROs, right? Like they're paying somebody. They're paying BMI or CSAC or ASCAP, right? but they're not paying all of them. And I'm, and I'm talking about like some of the largest fitness brands in the country are like missing a PRO here or there. And the PROs get aggressive because of that. Um, so I, I think that that's probably the other piece is understanding for the gym owner to understand, okay, why do I need to pay, um, you know, BMI, ASCAP and CSAC? I mean, I've had several gyms just say, hey, we're, we're paying BMI, we're good. I think the, the, the biggest misconception there is when you listen to a track, right? And like, it, I, I, we could honestly probably type in any track that you, wanted to, that you wanted to type in, right? And it'll be like the singer signed to ASCAP, the drummer signed to BMI, the lead guitarist is signed to, you know, CSAC or GMR. And it's like every musician is, that, that contributed to writing that work might be signed to a different agency. So if you're playing like an hour's worth of radio or Spotify playlist, like you're going, you're going to hit all of those PROs and you need to make sure that you're paying all of them properly. So the only one that I have ever gotten reached out to has been ASCAP and they're super aggressive. I know yeah. the owners listening to this right now are sitting there nodding their head because they, they come at you so aggressive, but I've never talked to the other groups. Um, so I want to, I want to, I'm going to ask about Spotify in a second, but while we're on the topic, Let's just say you're, uh, I don't know, um, uh, you, some, some, some artist, right? Uh, whoever. And, or you're a Zach Brown band, for example, and you're a group of okay. people. Each one of those persons in that band could hypothetically sign with a different PRO, to your point. And then if you're listening to one Zach Brown band song, you might not be covered because they're all on different ones. That's the problem, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we could we could actually uh, probably uh, we could probably actually look one up, but you know I don't know if we have time. But yeah, I mean I, every example I give is almost every time almost all the PROs are contained in or at least seventy five percent are contained in one song, right? Just because some offer different benefits. Um, but yeah, you're gonna have a singer who signed to ASCAP, a drummer who signed to BMI, and they just signed a different you know you know, rights management. See, so I, I didn't know that. So thank you for letting me know. And, and um, so I, I also thought Rockbot was solving our problem, but it sounds like that's not the solution. In addition, 
What if you sign up for a Spotify paid account or a Pandora paid account? Does that qualify you? I mean, I think a lot of owners are using that as a solution. Hey, I have a paid account, right? Does that qualify or no? It does not. So here's what, and if you look at the terms and conditions of those accounts, like they're very clear. And even the consumer version of Fit Radio, they're, they're very clear that that set of rights applies to an individual consumer and it's not for business use. So when you're paying, you know, $9.99 a month for Spotify, you're only paying for your rates for your own listening pleasure, right? You're not paying for the, you're not paying the rates to play that music to 20 or 30 people at one given time in one class. Um, and, you know, the rates that they're paid and the PROs that are paid for that type of use is minuscule compared to what, you know, they're paid in the fitness setting. So if you're a gym owner out there and you want to use music to integrate into your, your workouts um, or you're a coach, so let's just say you're a coach and you have, um, I don't know, a private client or multiple clients, or maybe you're doing like Zoom, right? Private Zooms. What, what are the options right now? Because there's a lot of people that are doing uh, virtual, virtual training. So could I be playing um, my Spotify account over Zoom for someone else? Or is that still obviously because it's just one-on-one? -on -one? Or where does it get gray? Because I feel like there's a lot of gray area right here. All right. So obviously the disclaimer that I'm not an attorney. <laughs> I can't yeah. provide legal advice. Um, it, this space is very tricky. I will tell you this. We are in final discussions with some of the major labels about launching a, a solution on the digital side, which I can touch on maybe at the end. Um, so if you, so let's go back to your example of like you and I are on Zoom right now and I'm playing my Spotify playlist and I'm putting you through a workout. Now, do I have the rights to do that? No, technically, because you're using it for commercial purposes. I'm not using that for my own personal listening consumption, right? But are you going to, is, is a small outfit going to get popped for that on a live scenario? No. I think the labels obviously want to be compensated fairly in the PROs, but they also realize that like COVID has dramatically upended the industry and they're currently, and I think this is where the biggest opportunity for, for us exists, but there currently isn't a solution for that, right? Um, you know, the Pelotons of the world and the Echelons and some of these companies that actually have music licensing there's probably only 5% of the companies that need music that it can actually afford it, right? Because when you're talking about going out and getting video sync rights for music, it is wildly expensive and complicated. Um, just obtaining counsel to, to do the, you know, the agreements could be tens of thousands of dollars. And then you're talking about minimum guarantees and things like that. So um, does a true fully compliant solution exist for that right now? Not yet not fully compliant. Now there are some services are trying to do these simultaneous stream things. And there's, there are also some services that are telling their customers that they do have these rights. I've had conversations with universal music and they have made it very clear that these rights don't exist yet. Um, and it, that kind of goes back to like our conversation on why people are being so aggressive. I feel like the music industry has realized that the growth of the Spotify's, the Pandora, the Amazon music, like that's sort of topped out at this point. Like odds are good. You have one of those services, you're paying a premium. They don't see a lot of growth, but they do see a, a ton of growth potential in terms of revenue on the fitness side. So powering digital content, um, being able to fix the problem of instructors using personal versions of Spotify to be able to power their class. Um, so, you know, Apple music did a deal with play network to launch their business service. Um, problem there is it still doesn't cover your fitness class rates right so but yeah. yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of things happening in space a lot of misconception um and for something like an online like one-to-one -one, there just really isn't a solution so let's talk for a moment about fit radio um like i said i got introduced to it years and years ago and yesterday i was on a two-hour bike ride and I must, I listen to a, a lot of your mixes because um, I'm, I'm trying to get an idea of exactly which ones I like. Obviously the hard hitting, you have different stuff. But my, my question for you is um, as a coach, we'll start with a coach and then we could cut or an owner, whoever. One of the things that I like about your app is that I could go to um, like the license free one 
And I could use that if I'm creating like a YouTube, a Facebook live, something like that. Because what happens is I've been doing Facebook lives or whatever before. And, and my audio will cut out because it realizes I'm using a licensed song. So you, so if you're a gym owner out there and you want to do a, uh, do a YouTube video, you guys as of right now have a solution for that with, within reason. Like there's like 10 tracks that are available. Is that right? Yeah. So the Royal, there's like a handful of mixes that we've cleared the rights to that. If you put those out, like if you were playing that behind your video on YouTube, like you'd be okay. Right. Like it's not going to pass until we clear those rights. Um, but the other service that we're launching will allow you to create a video and pair that video with popular music. So you'll be able to actually pair it together, play it at the same time. Um, and, you know, obviously we've, we've got about a couple more months before we've got that fully cleared, but um, we are launching a solution. I, I'm not, the, I, I, you know, obviously you, you get a little scared when you get these things and you kind of tip your cap, but it's, a, it's an enormous opportunity that I think that we're forced, forced to solve. Um, there's a huge opportunity in the fitness space to not, just provide music, but to do it in a cost-effective way. Because what we've realized is, is most of the gyms that we talk to when they're doing the online piece of this, like they want to have a way to do it where they can just include it as part of a membership, not necessarily like, hey, let me try to make my members buy something else. Now, there are some that want to monetize the content, which they'll be able to do through us. But, uh, you know, I think for for us, what we wanted to do, and we've, we've accomplished it through this sort of unique functionality that we've created, is it's super cost effective. So that if you're a small gym, you can afford to bundle this with your members. And, you know, it enhances the value of your membership. Because I think for us, one thing that we, I hate to see what has happened to all the fitness instructors out of work. And then you've got this giant brand like Peloton, who's got 50 instructors, right? And they're like, straight global dominance. And to us, fitness is local, right? People want to connect with people that they know. And we think that there's a huge opportunity to take the small studio and give them the same platform, the same power as a Peloton to be able to have music and distribute content. Um, and we think that's definitely where the space is headed. I love that. Now, so what you're talking about is something in the future, which I get, yeah. but right now, um, one of the things that you and I were talking about and, and, and we're, we're going to be excited to release this to gym owners literally just to solve a problem. So we're talking about the digital play. Let's, let's put that on the kind of like over here for a minute. For sure. Let's talk more about the brick and mortar. So if you're a brick and mortar, mortar operator right now, you have a problem. We've had a problem for many years. You need to play right. music because it's part of your class, but you're probably not compliant. And you're also looking for music to play. And so one of the reasons why I like using Fit Radio is because we could just have pre-designed tracks we could click on non-explicit which i think is a huge deal and it also just gives our coaches an ability just to go in there hey i'm going to hit the top 40 and i'm good to go and you don't have just like oh it's jason's playlist that's like a bunch of different songs it's just one consistent hour long uh you know track right which is great so what solution do you have for owners right now because you're the first person i've talked to which is why I'm, I'm talking to you and I, I'm so excited about it, that actually can solve the problem and not just a part of it. So what does that look like and how does someone do it? Yeah, so we, we spent the last year negotiating with the PROs with the ability to launch the ability to be able to include PRO licensing as a part of a business tier service of Fit Radio, right? So the idea is, and you know, it, it's, we can't really give you rates unless you tell us your size. The cool thing is like, we don't mark up the licenses. We don't do anything like we're honestly, we just do it as a pass through service to help the PROs and to help compliance. Because honestly, we've gotten thousands of emails over the past several years of do I need to pay these people? And why are they asking me for money? Um, and we felt like at least for Fit Radio, we can approach it from a less aggressive perspective and help sort of, you know, clear up the misconceptions because I mean, you know this, there's a whole, floor of people who their job is to look up gyms and call them and ask them for money, right? Like they're just a collection agency, right? But we do feel strongly that the artist should be compensated at a different rate for the types of use that, you know, exist in a fitness class. So 
we met with all the PROs. They were on board with the idea. And so we've launched this tier and you can go to fitradio.com and click on the four gyms tab. Um, everything you need to know is there. You can just click on it. Um, and essentially we can, we have the ability to handle all of your music licensing needs on your behalf. So you could pay us the PROs email. You could say, I'm paying fit radio. They can verify the account with us. Um, and it just makes things a lot more simple. Um, and then, you know, as far as the usage side, I, I think, you know, look, what we do from the day one has like focused on fitness playlists, right? And I think that the reality of, and maybe a lot of gym instructors and, and coaches may not want to hear this, but they're just not as good as they think they are at making playlists for an entire class, right? So we look at, we look at data, we look at data from different types of fitness instructors. We have monthly calls with a team of instructors to help curate these playlists. So we've got sort of this hybrid of using data um, and then just really human curation of working with trainers to constantly create hundreds of fresh new playlists each month, right? And if, if, if you're a studio owner, when you come to us, you know exactly what you're gonna get. You know that if you're playing a certain station, um, you know, that station is going to be full of workout tracks. It's going to be compliant. It's going to be clean. You can turn off the explicit lyrics. Um, and I think that's really where, you know, we've sort of won. And I think even to this day, we probably service the majority of the gyms in the country. I think the difference is um, most of the gyms that we have are instructors that are actually paying for Fit Radio out of, out of pocket versus the actual gym paying us, right? And, and as part of this package, you know, you'll get multiple accounts for your instructors to be able to utilize. Um, so you'll, you'll have that, right? And ultimately, you know, the gym will, should, should pay for the subscription versus the actual coach themselves. Well, and, and so just to kind of validate that, for a long time, what we've done is we've paid for the coaching subscription, right? But yeah. according to what you're saying, that's actually not allowed because that's an that's a end consumer product, whereas this is a business product. And so we need to upgrade our own membership, right? So that our coaches don't have just their own accounts we pay for, let's just say. We actually just have one business platform that allows us then to use it for consumer, um, for, for business purposes. Is essentially um, right. what you've been able to solve, right? Yeah, no, it is. And, and, and my way of explaining that is, um, I actually have some friends at all gyms and I have, they're like, so, so what's this cost you? And I'm like, honestly, man, if you pay, if you play fit radio for 16 hours a day, like it's going to cost us about 23 to $25 per month. Right. So like if you're, if you're using the individual version of our service, um, it comes at a dramatic loss to us, right. Based on a bus paying per play. So that's kind of what we did this year is, and we've started to roll this out slowly and this has kind of always been in our terms and conditions, um, but we've just kind of started to enforce it over the past several months. And, but if you have the, you know, the five to $7 Fit Radio consumer product, you can use that product for 30 hours a month, right? And I think from data, that's what we see. Like most of our individual accounts, their max use on the, their max use is like 20 hours. Then we have our gym users that are using several hundred hours of music per month. Oh, so that's why, okay. you know, we, we have that sort of, we're drawing that line right now. We're trying to do it gradually because we also understand COVID um, and we understand the impact that that's had on the industry. And we're trying to do the best that we can of, of really sort of showcasing value. We have, you know, if you have multiple locations, we have a ton of package, like we're doing, we've done a deal with some of the other larger chains where we actually create custom content for them on a monthly basis as part of their package. So. Um, we get it. And I think for us, you know, we're, we do everything we can to justify value. But, you know, I think that by working with us, we're going to be able, you know, if you work with our music department, we're going to be able to steer you in the right direction to give you the perfect playlist for your class. Um, right. And I feel like, I mean, I'm biased, but there's just a difference <laughs> in playing fit radio, right? Because the time that we put into playlists every month, the curation, um, the production execution, the seamless transitions, all that sort of stuff. Like it just takes, it's hundreds of hours every month in that, right? And I think with us, you have a service that you know is putting that type of effort into the playlist curation. You're probably one of the only people. So on the Business of Fitness podcast, we probably had, I don't know, 150 episodes, whatever it is. You're one of the very few, maybe a handful at most, maybe, maybe even the three that we've actually had someone who comes on, talks about an issue, and we're actually promoting their product with their we're just 
we're promoting it because I'm such a big advocate of what you're doing because you're going to solve a problem for owners. And that's what this podcast is all about. It's about solving problems and rising the tides. And if you're an owner who's thinking about building their playlist for even a couple hours a week, you know, you can solve that problem. And not to mention, you can't just play off iTunes in your gym. That's not allowed. And so you're solving that problem. So I think it's incredible. We're going to have more links uh, in the show notes on if someone does want to get this in their gym, what it looks like, how much it costs. I think the price is like anywhere from a hundred to $150 a month, give or take, depending on how big their gym is. Um, is that, that's correct, yep. right? Um, yeah, it, it, it depends on size. It depends on class capacity and how many classes you have. Another final, or another quick note. We've also found that a lot of, a lot of gyms have actually answered these questions wrong and they were paying a higher result in turn. So like our, another piece of compliance is making sure that you're paying what you should be paying and not more than you should be paying. Okay, got it. And so, you know, people will reach out if they have any questions. Obviously, you could solve their problems. Um, all the links are going to be in the show notes. But while I'm on the, the question about Fit Radio and, and what you guys have done, from a high level, from a business perspective, what does Fit Radio do and how many people are doing it? Because you have a lot of DJs. Like, how many DJs do you guys have? Uh, I think we have like 120 at this point, right? I mean, not all those guys are active on every uh, every given month, but I'll tell you, there's a, uh, I mean, just to be completely honest, right? Because there's a ton of business owners. The, the, what we're doing, there's not a lot of people doing it because it, it's very expensive. The unit economics around what we do and the royalties that Fit Radio pays. Uh, I mean, you know, we've met with investors in the past and they love our business, right? And they look at how much we're paying in royalties. They're like, wow, this is not that attractive. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, the answer is we really love it. And I think we look at the long-term goal of trying to continue to solve problems in the fitness space, continue working on compliance because, you know, music and fitness aren't going anywhere and we are a leader in the space. And, and uh, I think that over time, things tend to work themselves out. So, um, but yeah, we're, there's not a lot of options in the space, but Again, the services that we provide on the licensing side, we don't mark up that service. Like you can go get those licenses yourself. Um, you'll probably save a little bit of money with us just based on our, some of our chain discounts. Um, and we can help you make sure that we do it right. But we don't charge you, you know, a VIG on top of your license, right? We just have made this system easy so that you can get compliant and feel good that you, you know, you're not going to have a legal issue in the future. Love it. And so if someone wants more information, obviously they can go to uh, what fitradio.com. Uh, they could, or they could check the show notes below. I think we're going to offer a, a slight discount, if I'm not mistaken, for uh, anybody who's listening to the podcast, please check the notes because there'll be more information there. Um, if they want to know more about, you know, Rusty and about Fit Radio, where else can they go besides your website? Anywhere else? Uh, I mean, Fit Radio is cool. <laughs> probably Fit Radio is probably the best spot. Um, check us out on LinkedIn. There's some stuff on there. Um, but yeah, probably just fit radio. And obviously I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very accessible. I'm rusty at fitradio.com. If you have any questions, um, you know, I talk to gym owners every day. I think it makes us better at what we do. So, um, you know, if anybody has any questions, I'm, uh, I'm happy to help. Love it, man. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the fact that you've been able to create a solution to a problem and one that we have, and we haven't found a good solution to, and, uh, we, we need to now upgrade our accounts to make sure we're compliant with everything, but I'm glad you've taken the legwork out of it. And thanks for making awesome, uh, awesome beats, man. We'll be in touch soon. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for having me.